All right, guys, uh, welcome back. It's been a few days since I've put a video up because, well, it's been hot. I haven't wanted to put a video up, and, yeah, you know how it goes. And then progress has been slow, you know. You need parts, you need materials, you need all this stuff. Well, I did start a video a while back, so I'm either going to use some of that original footage I made or whatever, but this is all going to be about media blasting at home and how I do it, what tools I use, um, and as you can see, I've got a big pile of stuff that needs to be blasted here. Some of it's been kind of blasted in the past. So, you know, like these little covers here. So, you know, they kind of look like that. You know, why I blasted them? Because I was, I was it was in the thing and I was just doing it. Because these I probably just replace anyway. Because I need a couple of them. But I will work on getting all this stuff blasted and primed and painted and some of it powder coated and the powder coat stuff I do will turn out like this essentially now this is one I did several months back and this is one the other side that I just did uh, a week or two ago blasted powder coated that this is a satin black this one satin black covered in dirt um, this is a summit powder that I used on this and it's stuff I don't know what it is uh, but for this kind of stuff seems fine works fine i've got some stuff that sat out in the sun and it did not discolor like uh the really cheap stuff from as much as i like harbor freight i like buying a lot of stuff there don't use their powders that they sell for their powder coating because that stuff will fade really quick in the sun it does not have any uv inhibitor so you know for utility stuff here in the inside it's fine but don't use it for something in the sun uh use something a little bit better so you get that. And also, you do all your little brackets that way, too. I don't know if I'll talk about the uh, powder coating. I may do that in a separate video. Um, but uh, I'm going to talk about blasting cabinets, a little hand tool for blasting very small stuff, a pressure blaster, and also a pressure washer blaster. So we will get started with the blasting cabinet, which is kind of the most common of all of them. All right, well... This is my blasting cabinet. This is not how you've seen it in other videos. I have done a few modifications to it since then. Uh, before I had the table on the other side, a um, number of other things, and it didn't have a good dust collection on it. So I've modified all that. And so basically at this point, I've got it set up, and I'll get the camera here so you can see. Now, you see you come down here. I've got it to where I can actually slide a bucket underneath it and be able to dump out what I have in there. So that's always a good thing. Uh, over here, now, this thing originally comes with a wall wart transformer for lights. It gets really hot. I have more lights in here than what it was meant for. So I took this, um, this is an LED, um, uh, just, a, just a little power supply for LEDs. I, it, this is the old one from the kitchen. This one has an issue where it will flicker every so often, so I had replaced it, and like it, it's good enough for in here, so I've switched over to that. Uh, I have relocated this little dust port from up here to down here, and this is my cyclone for the dust collection. So what happens is, is the air gets pulled out of here through here into the little shop vac down there and you get rid of most of the fines will get caught into this and they will end up in that uh, pretzel container there which i didn't plan for that to be in the front it just turned out that way uh and as you see i just have an el cheapo shop vac down here this was a walmart special at christmas time um now lighting wise um let me pause here for a second. And and we're back. Uh, somebody uh, wasn't prepared, did not have the cord plugged in. Now, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of extra lighting in here. I added all these little strip lights. Um, these are just the generic El Cheapo. I bought these things. This is that, you know, the stuff that comes in a roll. Um, it's like 16 feet or something. And I paid like $2 a roll. And when I put this one together, I went ahead and put this stuff in here. And it does work and this is not the waterproof stuff this is the plain old el cheapo stuff and there's only a couple sections that have gone bad over this time so i figured that's kind of a win now back in the corner here you can see my inlet duct for the um cyclone well if i came in at the bottom be sucking up a lot of crap well if you run up here and you go inside this little can you're just going to get dust and you're not going to get media so that's how i keep the uh the media in the contain in the 
in the, in the cabinet instead of getting sucked out. Now, <sighs> this is a little light from uh, Ikea. Unfortunately, do, do not sell this little light anymore. And it had a regular base on it. And I, you know, took it apart and mounted it onto a magnetic bowl. So it's a magnetic light. And you can put screws up there and stuff if you want. And it works pretty good. Um, probably some others on the market now, but I bought a bunch of these when they were dirt cheap at Ikea. So they work pretty well, actually. Um, I have changed um, this uh, uh, the air here. It, the air did come in here. Um, I re ideally, I wanted this to be at the top and actually go down. It makes this tube work better, makes it more comfortable, but just doesn't work out well for that. So I've got it going up here. This actually works somewhat well when you go up here, but if you were coming from the top, that would be better. Um, and as you can see, I have my regulator on the outside here and an inlet here. Um, a lot of people put fancy regulators and all that stuff on these things. I have found that I can vary pressure, I can go up, I can go down. It doesn't make a bit of difference, so I just do it full full throttle, let it go. It does, does catch a little bit of water in here. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. all I've got on this little thing here, and there will be some uh, improvements in the future. This is going to be replaced. This is uh, plastic on the one side and glass on the other. I'm going to put something here if I can figure out a way to make it and make it work and seal it relatively well to where you don't have to deal with tear-offs on the inside. Uh, my idea is kind of like um, when a friend of mine, his son used to do motocross and uh, had a way of, uh, instead of having a tear-off, you had a plastic film that was worked a little better. If it works, I will make a video of it. We'll see. Okay, now the other thing you're gonna ask is, what nozzle do I use? I don't know. Uh. Okay, these are the ones I'm not using. I'm not using this little bitty one, the smallest one that came with it. I'm not using that. And I'm not using the biggest one. Uh, and I'm not using the one that looks like it's about a quarter. I want to say it's about a 3 16 nozzle. I don't know if that's the right one to use. If that's what's in there, that's what I use. And uh, I did, I have I messed with them a little bit and changed them around and saw no real appreciable difference in how well it worked. I just stay away from the little bitty ones, stay away from the big ones, pick something in the middle, call it good, it works. Um, that's about all I got to say on this thing at this moment. Um, and I will say that my media of choice for this cabinet is glass. It is crushed glass, which is this stuff right here, which is kind of looks like sand, but this is actually a crushed glass. And this stuff is about $10 for a bag. I don't know, a bag's 60 pounds, I'm assuming, like a sandbag. It's about $10-ish, usually. Um, you can get it on sale sometimes as low as about anywhere from 6 to $8 is when I usually get it. Uh, you can strain this and filter it. I'll talk about that later when it comes to the pressure, uh, the pressure blaster. There, you can also use, if you want, in any of these things is you can use a coal slag, which is this stuff here, which is a black, um, very gritty stuff. This stuff works pretty good. Um, crushed glass, a little bit uh, smoother. It's, it's a little more gentle. It's not quite as aggressive. It will ha form a lot of fine dust. And that's why I have the, the cleaner on this with a little cyclone to get all the fine dust out. Works really well and the lighter color of the dust in here makes it easier to see while you're blasting. If you use this, this coal slag, this black stuff in here, even with a lot of light, it's, it's a dark, it's a pit. Um, it, it's just not enjoyable to do. It does cut faster. This will cut faster, much, much faster than the glass. But it, it's just, like I said, it just, it's hard to see in there. The other issue I have with using the coal slag is that if you are doing cast iron, do not use this. This stuff has a tendency to tunnel in to the cast iron. It will make it just look like a bunch of worms decided to you know, dig a bunch of holes into cast iron. It, just, it is too aggressive for cast iron. The, coal, the, the glass, the crushed glass on the other hand, works really well. It does not tunnel in like this uh, coal slag will. There are other abrasives to use. Uh, I have used... Uh, uh, glass bead, a glass bead for if you're doing aluminum, you know, you're just doing really gentle aluminum parts, it works really well in here. Um, 
it's really slow. I'm not a fan of it. I mean, but if you have an application where a glass bead is what you want to use, use it. But just beware, it is excruciatingly slow unless you have massive amounts of air and high air, high air pressure. Um, there are, another thing, you start looking up, there's a number of different things. The other, uh, Garnet, is the other m very popular abrasive to use. It's great stuff. It's hard. Re it is somewhat reusable. It's just not the easiest thing for me to get because I don't know of a supplier here to get it from. Uh, if I had a supplier, I would probably use it. I'd probably use that over the, the glass, in, in fact. But I just don't have a supplier that I know of. There's got to be somebody. I just haven't. When you look up, I can't find anybody. I, I can't find anybody that supplies this stuff. So, without driving to the other side of the Metroplex, and I'm not doing that. So, stick with the glass. It works. Uh, but the Garnet, if you can get it, give it a try. It might work pretty well for what you want. Okay. I'm going to hunch over a little bit here. So now for pressure blasting. Uh, this is about the third one of these that I've had over the years. Uh, they're not bad. It is the messiest. It is the most air consumptive type of blasting generally. Um, there's a lot of bad things about it. However, it is very flexible and it is very fast. Uh, they do plug, you have issues with them plugging up if you decide to recycle your media. Not always a good idea. I do it. I have a tool that I made to do it. I will um, put something, uh, you know, I'll uh, put it here so you can see it. So now if you've got good filtered media, this thing is pretty good to go. You know, you open this up, put a funnel on it, you pour the stuff in here. You'll have the choice of a couple of different ways of getting your media spraying on it. Some of them will be, now this is not exact, but this would go in the end of the hose here. There would be a valve and then you'd have this little nozzle on here. This is what the simplest ones will come with. These don't really work well. They clog up, they mess up. The next step up from that is when you get into these little guys here. Let me put these down. When you get into these here, these are dead man valves. This one's not a dead man valve anymore. I got tired of that. Uh, this is one I actually picked up at a estate sale as a spare for it was 250, so why not? This one uses the same nozzle as the uh, standard one. Now, the trick to know on these is that when you work on these nozzles, you'll have an issue with it. You'll take it apart and you'll say, oh, wow, yeah, see that here? Well, there is a seal that goes in here. And I'll go over to this one here, which it has it here. I got confused. Okay, that is a faucet washer. If you don't know what a faucet washer is, you know, ask your parents. They probably know. But that's all, all that is. It's just a standard faucet washer. Just make sure the hole in it's big enough. And you'll put that up against the uh, the nozzle here and this here, and that'll seal here. And this is a very common tip. Not a big deal. So you'll hook up to the back end over here, and you just do that. You just squeeze, and it works. This style over here, this is the more common style. This is one, they this, bought this at Arbor Freight years ago. This one had a lever here and a little thing that dropped in front of the nozzle up here. Uh, I took it off because the spring was so stiff. It got to the point where you're holding this thing, and it just got to be so difficult to hold on here. It's, it just it would wear out your hands trying to do it. So I took it off, and I don't have that on there. So when I want this thing to turn on, I go turn the valve on, and it works. So that's what I do. And yeah, I know. It's chopping my head off. It's all right. You don't need to see that. But anyway, so... This style works pretty good. This has a different kind of nozzle in it entirely, and which I've misplaced all of my spares. I don't know where they are. But this has a... And this one's broken. I guess I need another one. Great. But that's a ceramic nozzle with a little rubber tip. It goes on here. And the reason for that rubber is that dead man valve actually seals on the end of this and... You know, seals in the end of it, shuts it off. Works pretty good. 
But um, like I said, my my hands are not strong enough to deal with that dead man valve while you're just fighting with it. It's just not any fun. Um, this thing does have it does have a an air filter on it. It does kind of work. These things work. They do their job. They're just not really. They're, they're not for everybody. They are, and the other thing is when you use them outside, they are noisy. They are very noisy. So your neighbors are probably not going to like it. So most people, unless you've got big, big yard, big area, and you're away from everything, this is just not going to work for you because you're not going to have the air for it. 60-gallon compressor minimum. Um, you're not going to have the air. It's going to make a lot of noise. It's going to make a lot of mess. Uh, I will. Bla I have blasted inside of here. I did the bottom of the car inside of here, but I had to tent everything off. Uh, it, it, it is kind of a pain in the butt. But if you can live with all those issues, it's a good option. It's a really good option. So uh, on to the next one, which is uh, we'll do water blasting next. I like that one. That was more fun. All right. Now for water blasting. And for water blasting, you need a pressure washer. You need a big pressure washer. Biggest one you can get. Uh, electric, not going to cut it. You need a, something that's going to start at, say, minimum of, say, 3,500 PSI and, say, two, and a half, two, two and a half gallons per minute, bare minimum. Bigger the better. It's just like an air compressor. You can never have too much air and you can never have too much pressurized water. And you will need one of these little guys here. And this is just a, you know, Amazon eBay special. And it is just a nozzle that goes right on the end of your pressure washer standard connection. It has a nozzle in the end. And these nozzles are replaceable now. When this one was bought, these nozzles were not available. You actually had to buy the whole thing to get a replacement nozzle. So they're available. Some of these actually come in a kit with extra nozzles. They work really well as far as I'm concerned. However, they go through a lot of abrasive you will use much more abrasive on this than you will on any other method. It's just a drawback of the way it works, but it just does work well. Now, so, I'm, you know, as you can see, you've got this end that goes on the pressure washer, and you'll take this end, which is your pickup tube, and you'll just put your hose onto there, stab that into your bucket of sand, whatever sand, and it just works. This is actually a far better pickup tube than what is in that blasting cabinet. This is actually what the style of what used to come in the old blasting cabinets. They went to a different tube that doesn't work as well. But for me, it works fine on the blasting cabinet. So there you go. Now, the results you get out of that are going to look like this. Now, you can see there's rust on that. Okay. So it does get a little rusty. But all of this was done in seconds. And I mean in seconds. Now, obviously, I wasn't really trying to. I was just playing with it. And I just videotaped it just to play with it. And you can see it works really well. Now, these parts have been sitting for, you know, it's a couple weeks now. It's been a couple weeks since I did that. Now, the problem with water blasting is, is that you're putting water all over it. It's going to rust. Well, you can see that's, that's the amount of rust that it got on it from being wet. You know, and it was probably 95 degrees that day. So it was a cool day. And when I did it, I blasted it, you know, took it, shook it off, and let it sit in the sun for a little bit, and then brought it inside and set it here. And this is the way it has looked. Now, there is a product called Hold Tight. It is kind of expensive, and it's hard to get smaller quantities of it. Uh, I think you can get it by the gallon. And it is meant to be sprayed onto your metal after you blast it. And yes, I'm sweating, because I have to have the air conditioner off right now because it makes too much noise and yes I feel it coming down my face and I'm I hate summer 105 is coming but 
Anyway, back to the hold tight thing. So the hold tight, you'll spray that on there after you're done blasting. And essentially, it'll hold off the rust for a little while. I don't know what it is. I, I have no idea what's in it. I just know that it does work. And there are other products that do the same thing that are a little bit cheaper. But I know hold tight. It's a good product. It works. It's just not the easiest thing in the world to get. So I would say that, you know, if you've got a pressure washer and you want to do big stuff and you can deal with the fact of maybe some surface rust, surface rust and maybe come back and clean off the surface rust, you know, just use this to get the majority of stuff off let it dry you can always come back and sand it again or you can dry blast it at that point just to take the surface rust off real quick because you would your dry blasting would just be very quick and done whereas the pressure washer did all the heavy work so that's an option uh for media i was using glass media you know crushed glass again using stuff that i had recycled in several times so i didn't didn't mind if i lost it it's not a big deal um but it's a good method it works well uh, just make sure when you order this that you order one that the nozzle is sized to the specifications of your pressure washer because of the flow and the pressure dictates what size nozzles in this and you can't change that so you have to buy the one that fits your pressure washer um, these things are not expensive they just work I like them they, they are really good for big stuff and outdoors frames stuff like that work great um, our last little bit here gonna be on uh, my little handheld one All right, as I wipe the sweat off of me, I can't have the air. It's too noisy with the air conditioner. Sorry. Um, this is just a generic central pneumatic Harbor Freight. I think they discontinued this one. Uh, just a little hand blaster. You fill this up with whatever your media is, and you spray. Now, put that on there. Put these little swivels, these little air swivels, put that on every tool you have, and believe me, it'll just make life so much easier. Now, the reason I bought this particular one is because it is small. There are other ones like this that have a much bigger hopper. Well, I want this for hard to get to spots. In fact, on the Mustang, there were a number of spots where I could reach down into, and even with the hose, and I could reach down into there, and I could blast an area with this, and it works really well. Now, it also works well if like, I've got one tiny little spot somewhere that I want to do. Just use this. A lot of times I'll put a put my uh, leather gloves on my leather uh, you know stick welding gloves, and I will put this just like this with my hand like that, and I will blast an area just like that. Works just fine. The other trick that I use is that if I'm doing some more of it, I've got a piece of plastic with a hole in it. And then I'll tighten that down. It's you know semi-tight because you don't want to break it because it's cheap plastic but you do just like that and now you've got a little shield on there so you can actually kind of see what you're doing a little bit you're going to get some of it bounce back and hit you but the shield is going to block quite a bit of it now these work well if you're going to use recycled material make sure you filter it really good because there is a tiny little hole in this and I decided while I was working on the Mustang I had a bunch of media on the floor and it's like oh, yeah you know I just need a tiny bit in here. I'll just scoop some up off the floor and I'll dump it right in there. It worked for about 10 seconds and then immediately found a chunk of the black abrasive from the uh, the, the Bauer, uh, Bauer tool, you know, the black um, poly abrasive. A tiny piece of that got stuck in a little hole and I had to take the whole thing apart to clean it out. So make sure you filter before you put it in there. But these little things work great for just tiny little spot areas and they're cheap. So that's about all I've got on that. And it's probably really boring, but that's what I use for my blasting. And when it comes to your uh, safety protection stuff, use whatever masks, use whatever shields that you think that you need to use. And for whatever, any, and for, no matter what, don't use sand. Do not use sand. Sand has a lot of silica in it, and that's where the silicosis thing comes from. And that's why I do not use sand for anything. I do not use it. It's just, it's not worth fighting with. Even for wet blasting, I don't use it for wet blasting. Because even after you do the wet blasting, you say, oh, it's fine when it's wet. But now you've got much a much finer particulate of the sand that you've now broken up. So now that can float around after it's dried. So that's why I don't use sand. Um, that's about all I got. So hopefully it's not too boring. Hopefully you learned a little bit. And I'm going to turn the air conditioner back on because the coolest I can get it is 80 degrees in here. And it's going to be 104 this weekend. Ugh.